Well, hello everyone, and welcome back to Network 13. Uh, I say welcome back because I haven't made a video in quite a while. And today, we're going to do something pretty simple and pretty fast, so I have to ease back into this. Uh, first of all, we have to clear this off, make some room. We're going to be designing and building um, an RC oscillator based on a Schmidt trigger logic gate and we're going to use a CD4093B which is a what it says CMOS quad NAND Schmidt trigger and this is these function like regular old NAND gates except for the fact that the input threshold will change depending on the state of the output so if I were to connect let's say two, these two inputs together and this would function like an inverter, this regular old logic inverter. So don't worry about the NAND right now. This is just what I had on hand in my in my stock. So what would happen is if we took the input, the, the inputs together, and we started to ramp up from zero, we would ramp, ramp, ramp until we hit VP, which is the positive going threshold. When we hit the positive going threshold voltage, the output would change, it would go low. Now if we continued to go past this positive threshold and then we started to ramp down, output would still remain low, remain low, remain low until we hit this point, which is Vn, which is a negative going threshold. So what happens is threshold will change. So when the output is high, the threshold will be at the Vp voltage. When the output's low, the threshold will be at the VN voltage. And the difference between these two thresholds is called VH, or it's the hysteresis voltage. And the reason we do this is, well, right here. This is for noise immunity. This would be useful in a high noise environment system of some kind. So that if we had the input at 5 volts, let's say, and we didn't want any superfluous switching to happen, the input would have to go below the VN point before we got a false switch or a false, a false change. Okay, so what do we do with this? How do we make this into an oscillator? Well, I mean, maybe it's already obvious to you how we're going to do it. Go on to the next page and... This is our circuit. We're going to use two gates out of the quad gate arrangement. And it doesn't matter which one we use, right? But I'm just using the first one. I've tied the two inputs together to make a just a logic inverter. I've also tied the two inputs together of the adjacent gate. And we're going to be using that as a buffer. And then we're going to take our output from here. So how this works is assume that the input is low, assume that the cap is discharged completely. That would mean that the output would be high. So if the output's high, we're going to begin to charge the cap through this resistor, and there'll be a time constant associated with that, right? So as the cap begins to charge and begins to charge, it's going to approach VP, which is the positive going threshold. And when it hits that point, the output will change state and it will go low. And when the output goes low, we'll begin to discharge the cap through the resistor. And we're going to start to discharge and discharge until we reach Vn. And this will, well, you know, just like you saw here, it's going to oscillate. It's going to go, it's not going to be a triangle, it's going to be an exponential, but it's going, it's going to oscillate. It's going to go up and down, up and down, up and down, and the output's going to switch. And in this case, since we want to buffer this output, we want to buffer this node, we just we're using the adjacent gate to do that. So we'll get a nice sharp logic level output here. Now, there's a formula in the data sheet, and here it is. Um, it's solved for TA, TA, which is the the time of one cycle. And it's going to be uh, R times C times the natural log of this expression. 
VP over VN times VDD minus VN over VDD minus VP. Um, and this formula holds true under the following conditions. If R is greater than 50 K ohms, but less than one mega ohm, if C is greater than 100 picofarad, but less than one microfarad, this will produce a cycle time of between two microseconds and 400 milliseconds. That's quite a range there. And consequently, that'll translate to a frequency of greater than two and a half hertz, but, or less than 500 kilohertz. Okay, now, um, for our example here that we're gonna build and design, we want a frequency, just an example, of one kilohertz. So, one kilohertz would translate to a cycle time of one millisecond. Now, I'm going to use a 0.1 microfarad ceramic cap for the cap, and I'm going to have to determine what value to make the resistor, because I don't know yet. Now, in order to calculate the resistor value, I need to know a few things. I need to know what VP is, and I need to know what VN is, which I don't know what those are. There are some values in the data sheet. I don't particularly trust them. Um, I think that they're, they're within limits, and that's fine, but for this particular case, we want to be a little more precise. So what we're going to do is we're going to wire up this, um, we're going to wire up this first gate and we're going to put a, a triangle in like you saw on the first page. We're going to put a triangle in from my signal generator and we're going to actually see on the scope what VP and VN are. And then we can use those in our formula and we can solve for R in this case, because we we know what everything else is. Oh, yeah, and well, so VDD is going to be five volts. Okay, here's our setup. Here's our experiment. I have the 4093 on my proto board, and I have, as you can see here, VDD. I'm mean, as close as I can get to five volts with my this bench supply. I have 5.01. I have. Um, a triangle output coming out of my signal generator. I mean, it doesn't look like one, but you'll just have to take my word for it. What we're going to do here is we're going to use my cursors. And cursor A, we're going to put on the falling edge of the output. And cursor B, we're going to put on the rising edge. And that's pretty good there. And what we get is... So this is VP. VP, we're going to say, is 3.11 volts. We're going to write that down on our, our paper. And VN, we're going to say, is 2.49. Of course, it changes around a little bit, but 2.49 volts. So we have our values for VP and VN. We also have our value for VDD, which is 5. We're going to call it 5 volts. It's 5.01 Okay, back to our formula. I've manipulated this formula so that we can solve it for R. So we end up with it's 0 0.001 seconds over 0 0.1 microfarads times the natural log of VP over VN times VDD minus VN over VDD minus VP. And take my word for it, you end up with an R of... 19 761 ohms this should give us a frequency of one kilohertz more or less so what we're going to do is we're going to build the circuit i'm going to put a potentiometer in there and set it for this exact value and see what we actually get it's probably going to be pretty close but we can always tweak it okay so I built our circuit. I oh, probably can't see that. I built our circuit with the gates and the cap and the resistor. And I set the resistor, the, the pot, for 19761 or you know fairly close. As close as I could get. And this is what's coming out right now. Now I have the green trace on the buffer, so it's going to be inverted right now. So it's going to go high when we hit VP and low when we hit VN. Just don't worry about that right now. Um, 
And if we go to our cursors and adjust, if we go to our falling edge and our rising edge, and if you look, because the VP is B now, but B's at 3.1, you know, it's jittering around, but 3.1112 or so, which is what it was before. And VN is at 2.49, which is what it was before. So that hasn't changed. Supply voltage is still 5.01. All those conditions are the same. You can see it looks it looks like a triangle. It's it's an exponential though. If you look, there's a little bit of a curve there. Um, if I turn my cursors off, you can see it a little better. So there's there's an exponential rise and decay there. But there it is, and that's a nice clean output switching from zero to five volts buffered. Now, the frequency, um, let's see, if I have to sweep a little differently. So my frequency right now is 1.0, wait, I'm not on the right channel for that uh, measurement. Channel two, that's better. Frequency is 1.06 kilohertz, which is pretty close to the predicted value of one. Of course, you know, we could we could tweak this potentiometer and, and lock it right in, but you know, it doesn't matter. We've proven our point. Now, okay, so this is an RC oscillator built with a Schmidt trigger gate. Now why would you use this or how would you use this or what would you use it for um well i'll tell you what you wouldn't use it for you wouldn't use it for a circuit where you needed something to be accurate or stable because that's not what this is this is very 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 dependent on supply voltage and if i change my supply voltage just a little bit my frequency changes Actually went out of range there. If I go the other direction, it changes some more. So it's not good for a a stable, accurate clock source <laughs> by any means. Um, one thing it would be good for is, of course, if you wanted to produce a quick and dirty audio tone in your circuit in your project. Or if you needed a clock and you didn't really care if, if, if this was acceptable, uh, you know, this amount of jitter and, and, and uh, uh, change was acceptable, that would be fine. Also, if you see if I, like if I heat up my capacitor, it's also gonna change, it's starting to, it's starting to change if I do that. So it'll change with temperature, it'll change with supply voltage and those are the disadvantages. The advantages are, of course, that this is a really simple circuit to implement. There's, there's, I mean, there's, there's nothing to it. There's really nothing to it. It's, it's, it's something you can implement if you had a spare pair of Schmidt trigger gates in your project, and it's just a, a resistor and a cap. It's very, very easy to build and very easy to get going. Um, but so has its advantages, has its disadvantages, of course, like everything else. Now, my next video will be an improvement on this circuit. And what we're going to use, let me um, move this. What we're going to use, and you probably guessed, yes, we're going to build another kind of oscillator. We're going to build a crystal oscillator. And these are. 32.768 kilohertz crystals and they're in a they're in a metal can and they have leads on them we're going to build these with and we're going to use a regular we're not going to use a schmidt trigger we're going to use a regular logic gate an inverter most likely a ttl inverter and we'll be able to see that this circuit will be much more stable and much more immune to changes in supply voltage. Now, 
32768, that's one of those magic numbers in, in electronics, right? So it, that's, a, you know, if you 2 to the, oh, I forget what a 2 to the 15, 15 no, something like that. Anyway, if you take this frequency and divide by 2 and divide by 2 and divide by 2, eventually you'll get to 1. You'll get to 1 second, which is frequently what these crystals are used for. They're, they're used in little cheap clocks and watches, digital watches. It'll give you one clock every second, which is what you'd want in a clock or a watch. Okay, anyway, I think we're done with this for today. Um, if you like this video, please, by all means, feel free to like it. <laughs> if you want to comment, you can comment in the comment section below or you can send email feedback to network13.contact at gmail.com. If you like this video and you like the other videos that I have up, I have a number of videos up now, other one, other videos. If you, if you like those and you think there's something you're interested in, feel free to subscribe by all means. I could use many more subscribers, many more views, and comments. Comments are always welcome. Anyway, I will, I will close this right now, and I will say, as always. Oops. You know what? Let's close on the scope trace. <clears throat> we'll close on the scope trace. And once again, I will say, as always. Thank you for watching. <laughs>